Welcome back to the channel. I am wearing green today, and I'm really glad you're here. Hey, today is going to be a quick little video. I just want to talk about a couple products that I just bought, and I'm not selling you anything. I'm not affiliated with these companies in any way, but I bought two similar products to do a little bit of a test. One I purchased on Amazon. The other I bought from a U.S. company. Pretty significant price difference. Is there a significant difference in quality? Stick around and find out. Welcome to my cluttered garage. You know I'm really glad you're here. So a couple weeks ago, you may have seen the video where I talked about this clamp-on two-inch receiver. Clamps onto your bucket of your front-end loader, and uh, it accepts a two-inch hitch. And you can put that on the front of your tractor. You can maneuver trailers around. It's really a handy little piece. Cost about $65. In that video, I tested it on my 10-foot utility trailer, but I also tested it on my 25-foot travel trailer. The travel trailer weighs about 4,200 pounds with a tongue weight of about 600 pounds. And although it moved it, it felt a little sketchy and I was a little bit uncomfortable moving it with that. The utility trailer, perfect. I'll use it for that probably all the time. Super handy for maneuvering. I, I like it a lot for that. But again, the travel trailer with that kind of weight, it did it, but it didn't feel too good. And actually, Later, I went back and I looked at my bucket. It left a little dimple where this clamps down. It clamps down and then there's a, a piece underneath that holds onto the bottom of the bucket. And I, I think the buckets on the compact tractors, the, the material is probably pretty thin on the bottom. It left a little, a little dimple. So I will not be using it again for that heavy travel trailer. So instead I looked at three-point hitch receivers. And of course I went to Amazon. It's kind of the go-to for people these days. I understand that. And I found this three-point receiver attaches to the back of your tractor, your three-point hitch, and uh, made by the same company as the clamp-on adapter, which is actually, there are several companies that sell them. I think they're probably all made by the same company in China. Um, decent quality, gotta say, the, the, the clamp-on adapter, um, good welds, um, looks good. I mean, really no complaints about it. This one made by the same company or at least sold by the same company, also made in China, um, seems to be pretty well made. Again, comparing it to something homemade that I would do, this is better than what I could do. But I, I looked at that and I started thinking about the importance of supporting American-made companies where you have employees and you know the whole story with that and we want to buy American when we can or if you're in another country you want to support your home country um, because it supports jobs it uh, supports the economy anyway you know about that so I started looking into American-made products and I found the heavy hitch which is a company in I'm almost sure it's Minnesota um, Heavy Hitch makes these three-point hitch uh, adapters, and uh, they make several different types, several different grades. This one is the standard duty hitch. You can get heavy duty, you can get ones with brackets for suitcase weights, lots of options. So let's talk about these two different products. The I'm just gonna call this the Amazon product. This one cost $69.50, shipped. Shipping included. This one from Heavy Hitch cost $250. There was a discount uh, when I bought it. It was on sale, so a $25 discount. So that's $225. But then shipping was $34.20 for a grand total, I've got my notes here, of $259.20. So you're talking $70 compared to over $250. I could buy three of these and still have $50 in my pocket. That's a tough choice. And quality wise, when I look at the two units, there is definitely a big difference in quality. The Amazon unit is listed at 29 pounds. I weighed it, I came up with 23 pounds. The heavy hitch is listed at 34 pounds, I weighed it, I came up with 35 pounds. 
So a difference of 12 pounds, 12 more pounds of material in this unit. And I have to say the finish on this one is exceptional. There's a couple little details I'll point out and we'll maybe get some close-ups of those. But uh, this one is definitely heavier. It's called a heavy hitch and it is heavy. It feels great. They both came with the category one pins. They both screw into place. The heavy hitch has the category one pins along with a jam nut, which is nice. You screw it in, you can, if you want your holes straight up, you can do that and then tighten your jam nut. The other one just simply screws in. I don't know how you tighten it other than stick a screwdriver or a rod in that hole and tighten it or put a pipe wrench on this side because it's not a hex, um, it's not hex shaped, it's just round. So you'd have to put a pipe wrench on there and tighten it, which works. The Amazon unit came with a pin for the top link. The heavy hitch did not come with a pin for the top link. No big deal, but again, when you're, th when you're looking at cost savings, and for the person who's barely going to use this thing, it's pretty nice to come as a complete unit. And honestly, for me, I think this would work just fine. I'm not going to use it that often. I'm sure it's going to pull that camper just fine. Um, I'm not going to run any tests on this to see weight capacities. I couldn't find anything on the internet, or at least on the websites, about capacity for these units. But I know that they would hold up just fine and this would work just fine for me. One pretty nice thing about the heavy hitch is you can order it in Kubota orange, John Deere green, Massey red, or black. So they have those options. It's a great powder coat finishing and it's gonna hold up for years and years to come. Let's talk about the fit and finish of these units. This is something that could be very important to a lot of people. The heavy hitch is quick hitch compatible. It's got the right width to fit right into your quick hitch the Amazon product is narrower than the quick hitch, so it's not quick hitch compatible, which means not only do I have to remove my quick hitch, I have to adjust my three-point bars on the back. Now my tractor has these quick adjust three-point stabilizers, so that really wouldn't be too big of a deal, but still it's one more step. So that may be a deciding factor for you. If you like using your quick hitch, the heavy hitch is quick hitch compatible. I've got a two inch ball here or two inch hitch with a ball on it and when I slide it into the Amazon product there is a lot of play here. There's nothing finished around the edge where the heavy hitch has a nice uh, trim piece right on the edge which you normally see on a two inch receiver. So there's a good three sixteenths of play on this one. On the heavy hitch, very little play, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. So I don't know, you know, this is standard two inch material. I don't know what that is. You know, maybe it's it's metric because it's made in China. I don't know, but there's a there's definitely a difference in fit and finish that way. The heavy hitch has these braces on the side which also appear to be very heavy. The Amazon has these long pieces, which again I'm sure they'll work. I'm sure they will. Let's go over and put this on the quick hitch and I'll show you one issue that I found for me. This heavy hitch is in fact heavy. Now you can see it fits right on the quick hitch, but because I cheaped out and I bought the Harbor Freight quick hitch, if you're familiar at all with the Harbor Freight quick hitch, the biggest complaint is that this top hook is not sized properly. It is too thick, it's too close to the bolts, and things just don't fit on here. So when I try and place it on here, I'm also finding that I can't lower this top hook. That's at the lowest setting right now, and it needs to go at least a half inch lower. So it's not gonna work for me here. Now what I can do is, I could raise this up a little bit and put my adapters on here, which you should have the adapters because this is a, uh, I don't know why these quick hitches come with such a big opening, but you have to put like category three to category one adapters to make them fit in that area. I know there are quick hitches that come that way. I think there's one sold by Good Works Tractors that you don't need any adapters for. So that would be kind of handy. But even if I do that, I still can't get this pin in here because this hook is too close to the bolts. So I can't push this in enough to get it to go. So 
although this is quick hitch compatible, it's not really going to work with my quick hitch unless I do some modifications. I don't think that's the fault of heavy hitch. I think that's really the fault of Harbor Freight and the design of their quick hitch, which works most of the time for me. But in this case, it's not going to work, and I'll probably change this out at some point or do something to make it work. So what's the takeaway here? Well, I think if you can support a company like Heavy Hitch, you should do it. You're going to get a better made product, you're going to get customer service directly from the manufacturer, and you're going to be supporting jobs and local economies. So that's pretty important. Saying that, I don't think anybody could blame you for going for the $70 option, especially if you're not going to use it very often. It's a tough call. You know, we want to support our local businesses as much as we can, but there's a big difference there of nearly $200, and that's not easy for people, and I recognize that. So, in the end, do what you can. I think the key for me is creating an awareness where if I can support a local company, and if it makes sense financially, I'll do it. That's not always the case. But I just think if we all work toward that awareness, if we try to support local when we can, if we try to support American-made products when we can, we'll all be a little better off. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you next time. And uh, comment in the comments. That's where you comment, after all. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have experience with either of these products. Again, I didn't do any kind of load test or anything like that. Maybe this thing is a piece of junk and I don't even know it yet. At any rate, let me know what you think. I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. Make sure you stop by one of our live streams Monday evening, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. We always have a lot of fun and, and when I can, I get some good guests to join and we talk about tractors and some non-tractor issues because sometimes we just want to break from everything we're doing and just talk about some pretty fun things. So join me if you can and I'll see you next time.